All right, so here we have from the 2013 exam, question number one, a nice 10 point question here. And we can see we're looking at some solubility of fluoride salts of alkaline earth metals. So we've got some KSP stuff going on here. So a student prepares 100 milliliters of a saturated solution of magnesium fluoride. So that's going to mean not everything's dissolved. There's going to be stuff on the bottom. So 0.5 grams of the solid is added to 100 mils of distilled water at our magic 25 degrees Celsius. And the, again, no more dissolves. The volume of the undissolved solid is negligible. This saturated solution is analyzed, and we find that the concentration of the fluoride ion in the solution is 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar. So first step write the chemical equation for the dissolving of solid magnesium fluoride in water. We're not precipitating it, we're dissolving it. So we get the solid breaking apart into the magnesium ion and two fluoride ions. All right, so the state symbols, solid, aqueous, not 100% crucial, but you got to show magnesium plus two and two fluoride ions. Now it wants us to calculate the number of moles of magnesium fluoride that dissolved. All right, and so what we can do here is we know that the concentration of the fluoride is 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar, and we have 100 mils, 0.1 liters. So when we multiply that, we're going to get the moles of fluoride that dissolved. Then when we use the ratio, two moles of fluoride get, came from the one mole of magnesium fluoride. That will tell us how many moles of magnesium fluoride dissolved. And so we get 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of magnesium fluoride. You can't use the 0 0.50 grams here because we don't know how much did dissolve and how much didn't dissolve. So you have to use the fact that you know that the solution had 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar of the fluoride ions. And those all came from the magnesium fluoride. Now we want to determine KSP. Okay, so first we need our KSP expression. So KSP is going to be the concentration of magnesium times the concentration of fluoride squared. We know the concentration of fluoride, 2.4 times 10 to the negative third molar. We don't know concentration of magnesium directly, but we do know that the concentration of magnesium is half the concentration of fluoride. So half of the 2.4 times 10 to the negative third is my concentration of magnesium ion. Because I get two fluoride ions for every mole or formula unit of magnesium fluoride, I only get one magnesium ion. Now I have my numbers that I can plug and chug. So I have my concentrations. Again, got to make sure that the fluoride concentration is squared. And that's how we get the KSP value of 6.9 times 10 to the negative ninth. All right, now this next part is going to be, we've got a mixture and we've got both of the ions, calcium and barium, present in the mixture. So we've got 500 mils of a solution and both the calcium and barium ions are at a concentration of 0.1 molar. So a student's going to separate the ions by adding sodium fluoride. And so that fluoride ion will then cause precipitation of calcium fluoride and barium fluoride. This is one of those um, fractional precipitation techniques. And so we see our KSP values. Calcium fluoride, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. Barium fluoride, 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth. So the first question is, which salt's going to precipitate first? All right, so again, we've got our solution with calcium and barium ions, and we're gonna add sodium fluoride, AKA adding fluoride ions. And one of those 
um, solids are going to precipitate first. And so hopefully you recognize that it's going to be the calcium fluoride. That KSP value is so much more sm small. And what that means is the concentration of calcium times the fluoride squared, that's going to be exceeded first. All right. And again, we, we know our calcium and barium ions are at the same concentration. And so whichever one, when you multiply the fluoride ion squared, you're going to get to that KSP value first. And that makes sense. Calcium fluoride is much less soluble than barium fluoride, as you can see by the KSP values. So it's going to precipitate out first. Now part two here. All right, for parts B here, assume that the sodium fluoride solution does not significantly affect the total volume of the liquid. So we were told that we have 500 milliliters. So the little bit of sodium fluoride that we're going to add won't mess with that. Now part two here says calculate the minimum concentration of fluoride necessary to initiate precipitation of the salt selected in part B. Now even if you chose the wrong salt down here. If you chose barium fluoride and did these next calculations based on barium fluoride correctly, you would still get the points. Okay, but I'm going to show you them based on the calcium fluoride. So what is the minimum concentration of fluoride necessary to get precipitation? Well, our KSP for calcium fluoride is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11. And we know the concentration of the calcium ions in the solution because they told us was 0.1 molar. So now using KSP and that 0.1 molar, I know uh, I take KSP, divide by 0.1, take the square root, and there we get our fluoride concentration, 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So that's how many, how much fluoride ion needs to be added in order for the precipitation to start. Now this next part you can do a couple different ways but it says here calculate the minimum volume of 0.2 molar sodium fluoride that must be added to initiate the precipitation. So here we've got 0.2 molar instead of 0.1 molar I'm sorry we have the 0.2 molar sodium fluoride how much has to be added. And so this one, I think, kind of sets itself up for an MV equals MV type situation. We want to know how much the volume of 0.2 molar. And that's going to be needed to initiate the precipitation. So this molarity, the second molarity, is going to be what we just calculated. Sometimes you ask yourself, why did they make me just calculate this? Because I can use it right here. And my second volume again is the 500 milliliters that they told us we had and again they reminded us by adding the sodium fluoride we're not significantly affecting the total volume meaning we're still at 500 milliliters and so when I play plug and chug with those numbers I end up finding the volume is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 2 milliliters 0 0.048 milliliters that's fine and so that's what we end up getting for that um, minimum volume. It's a little tricky and again you can solve it other ways, stoichiometry and stuff, but that's one of those ooh, a little bit tougher points to get out of this large 10 point question. And now we're down to the last part. There are several ways to dissolve salts that have limited solubility. Describe one way that we could re-dissolve the precipitate that was formed in part B. So again, if you said barium fluoride, no biggie. You're still going to get the same answers here. But how could we re-dissolve the precipitate? So here we see the dissolving of calcium fluoride. So eight, basically, we want to do anything we can that can shift this towards the products, shift it to the right. So one thing you could do if you have undissolved solute add more water. If you add water, then you're going to allow that um, undissolved solute a better chance to, to dissolve. 
The other thing we could do, this is an ionic compound, and pretty much we should know that for all ionic compounds, if we heat up the water, heat up the solution, we can get more of it to dissolve. Molecular compounds, no, but ionic compounds, yes. And then lastly, if you remember when we did KSP stuff, we had some different salts that would dissolve better in acidic solutions. Why? Because the added hydronium, or added hydrogen ions, would react with the negative anion if it came from a weak source. Okay, so here we see the fluoride ion. So yes, if we added acid, then that hydrogen ion would react with the fluoride, pull it out of the solution, causing more of the calcium fluoride to dissolve. Okay, now again, it just asked us to describe one procedure, so we only needed to talk about one of those. All right, I hope this helped with this question, and I'll see you soon.